Hold on a minute. Okay, try it again. Okay, well, it says green. It says we're on. Okay. Is that working? Yeah. I don't know if I'm in the right chat, but. Okay. 40 pounds of tomatoes. You want to get the skins off, pop them in hot water, throw them in some ice water, just pull them off. You chop them up. We ran ours through some cheesecloth that I've got sitting in the sink right now. Um, and we rinse it out in between batches. And we squeeze, twist, 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 and squeeze it until um, all the juice comes out. And then you put your tomatoes in your pot. Slow down. Slow down. I talk too fast. I get that all the time. Um, you want to add the peppers. So it was, I think it was six cups of peppers and six cups of onions. You do not have to follow that exactly. If you like more onion, or you don't like onion, or you hate bell peppers, whatever the case may be, you can modify this. So it's not imperative that you have a recipe recipe. You can change the amounts of the vegetables that you're putting in there. Um, oh, I forgot to put a jalapeno. The, I forgot about that. Jalapenos. It'll yeah. be in the next batch. This is still going to so no, It'll be okay. okay. So okay. It's, it's not a big deal because we're going to use this, um, like Danny was saying, we'll go just very versatile. So we can use it in sauce or um, chili or anything. It doesn't matter what we put this in. It's going to taste not like Mexican food. We can, I mean, you know, you don't have to put the chili powder on it stuff in it for it to be salsa. You can make it kind of what you want. Um, we threw in the onions, the garlic, the bell peppers, tomatoes, and then it's a cup of apple cider vinegar and about half a cup or so of sugar, but you can modify that too. If you want more sugar, if you want less sugar, um, or a touch more vinegar. Yeah, if you or think more vinegar. That. But that's a general recipe for um, us. But that's just kind of generally what, what we're doing. Um, in a second, I'm going to put this last jar together, and then um, Danny's going to strain this for me. And then the next batch, we won't have to ladle like this because it'll already be strained. Okay, so have you got the recipe? I'm going to let you be work. I'm going well, to try. I just it to them. Okay. Yeah, she's, I mean, are you finished? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to let her concentrate on getting this into the canner while I talk for a minute. Okay, we've had some questions on different things. And if you missed the recipe, we'll give it to you again. Or you can go back and watch the video again. Yeah. Y'all, I'm just going to tell you, I have a... <laughs> so I have a gluten-free pie recipe of it's for a pecan pie that I made yeah. a while back on my channel. And every single time I make that pie crust, I watch my own video. She and don't have it written down. Time, I don't have it written down. It's not a big deal that it's not in the description box. Y'all just go back and watch it again. They get another view. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So the salsa it, rep back recipe is in this and it's gonna be in the salsa the video. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just go back and watch it again. Hit that pause button. Those two lines, that's what that means. And Stop every time. <laughs> And you can write it down and put it in your recipe book if you want to do it that way. And I do intend to make fine. a recipe book at Wait. some point when we get time. Yeah. Well, if maybe it's we get time. We're going to do we a recipe book. Yeah. When? 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 We're going to do a recipe book because I've had so many people ask about a recipe book. And Danny and I have one, but we don't have any left. We're out. Well, and on my channel yeah. earlier today, I did a, a little video about, like, the, this is a canning frenzy and whatnot. It doesn't last forever. That's what a frenzy is. It's just for now. Yeah. And then things slow down. Turn the air down, so I'm just getting warm. Yes, we need some see. Yeah. Oh, we still so got it. <laughs> we're letting Danny eat a little bit. So if y'all have questions, um, we'll, we'll check it out and we'll ask in a few minutes. We'll try to handle it. But a lot of people think when you're canning that you can't mix recipes and you can't do. You can, but you got to know some of your limitations. One you thing is, anything okay. with salsa, as long as it's tomatoes, onions, peppers, garlic, you can water bath, but your vinegar has to be up in it, or your vinegar and sugar mixture has to be up, enough that it will not ruin on you. You can't skip on these things. Ooh. Danny and I made a huge batch last year. It was a really good batch of um, salsa. When we did the second batch, we went by the, the recipe, we put the right amounts, everything, the batch was really good. The second time we had more tomatoes, that was when we had a lot of tomatoes, so we modified the recipe. And when we did, we at doubled the, not only the tomatoes, we doubled the, the vinegar. Which, even though it should have worked out, 
for whatever reason, what we made last year was too vinegary. It didn't have enough sugar to calm it down. So what we did, if I cook with it, I add a little bit more sugar to kind of tame the vinegar taste to it. So if you were eating chips, that would be real, I mean, just uh, eating it out of the jar. Isn't that gorgeous? Can I see it? Well, that's so the recipe again, because we're saying the stream is going in and out, and they didn't get all of it. Okay, 40 pounds of tomatoes, 6 cups Slow of... Slow down. 40 pounds of tomatoes, sorry. 6 cups of onion. <laughs> 6 cups of bell peppers. About 10 cloves of garlic. I think in the thing we said, 4... You go. Um, <laughs> we're trying to slow her down. I'm just a fast person. Um, a cup of apple slow. cider vinegar. My brain got slow. And sugar. And um, about half a cup or so of sugar. But you can modify that, like I said. Salt. Um, One and a half. Was it three cup, three teaspoons or tablespoons of salt? It's three. Tablespoons? Yeah. Okay, three tablespoons of salt, in case you missed that. Yeah. Um, that's that it? Anything? Think and the jalapeno peppers. Ever how many? Per batch. This is two batches. One, two, three, six. Well, there should have been. Six what? You eat. Am I correct? With yeah. salt, you don't want too much salt. Six it. tablespoons is what's supposed to be in this batch. Oh, two batches would be okay, six. Okay, so I, I messed up on that one, so it's not six in this batch, but we're going to pretend like it is. Y'all hear she's I spraying some salt. It. I regard it. Yeah, the salt is not a massive issue we'll if you the have the vinegar and sugar in it. That's one one of the deals. you got to know that the vinegar and sugar are the main culprits in this that keep it from going hot and ruining on you. Yeah. Pressure cannon. And pressure yeah. cannon it is the next one. Um, you do not have to pressure can this because we have nothing in it that says it has to be pressure canned, right? Yes, you do, because we didn't put the... Yeah, because we didn't put the full amount of vinegar in it. That's why we're pressure canning. Okay, I got you. But I mean, if they follow them... a cup per batch. This is two batches, and we only put one cup. I feel like we're convenient to people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hold up. Okay, so if you follow a normal salsa recipe, and you do exactly by the book, you can water bath. Let's just say it that way. If you follow our recipe where we did not put as much vinegar in it, we yeah. cut that vinegar in it, then you're going to have to pressure to it. Does that make more sense? Yes. Because we're going around and around and around in here. Yeah. And if you put any vegetables, any vegetables, you have to pressure to it. I'm just going to say it. I put eggplant in it one year, and I did not pressure can. I did not lose it, but it was not safe. Just put it that way. I didn't even think about so, it. Just know your rules. Know, yeah. know the rules of canning if you're just starting out and be confident that you know what you're doing. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Just knowing what you're doing, knowing yeah. the rules, and then you're good. You don't have to be a basket yeah. case about it. Yeah. People get really scared of canning because it didn't yeah. come from a factory scared, and they're doing yeah. it themselves. But really, when you're living this lifestyle, yeah. you're taking your safety and your, your stuff into your own hands anyway. So. Oh, you're taking your you health. You have to be confident in that. Yeah, you're taking your health, you're taking your everything, yeah. your well, financial. That's, that's why we use essential oils, because we want to yeah. take charge of that part of our life. So if like you're not going to a doctor 24 too. hours a day yeah. for every little itch, bump, and bruise, then you're using essential oils. You're taking your health into your life, too. What are they saying? Because I think it's funny. I said, Amanda, you have to talk like you're talking to kindergartners. Laugh out loud. <laughs> I know. We're trying to tell her so I'm down. so sorry, guys. So but, it's hard to understand Amanda while she's turning to the side. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I'll try to, to focus. I'm sorry. And, uh, <laughs> so we have, what, wait, is this still going? This is, um, it's off. The back is on. Okay. All right, we, we have to watch the stove. We've got to do another batch. Okay, yeah. so I need a bowl. So while she's doing that, anything we do right now, Danny and I they usually... They want to know if you have a certain kind of tomato. Uh, this was a, we got these at Eubanks. This is a, or Charlie's You Pick It, whatever you want to call it. You know. um, what we did, our tomatoes are on the vine. They're green. And I saw lots of people said they had green tomatoes right now. Ours are too. But we did not plant as many tomatoes as we should have this year. We planted a about, what, a third of what we normally plant. And so we're not going to have a huge supply of 
tomatoes to make like 100 jars of salsa. We may make salsa and we may make 20 or 25 jars, but we wanted a good amount of salsa. So the other day we went to the U picket because their tomatoes are ready and they were just a red round tomato, I think is what they called them. They had different hybrids, they had different heirloom tomatoes. So Danny is, is taking the juice out of most of these. So if you use a paste tomato, you don't have to take as much juice out. Right. So my thought is we would do a um, paste tomato. If we grow them, we're doing paste tomatoes. If we go to the, you pick it, we, whatever we come across when we come up and down the aisles picking tomatoes. That's what we've been doing. Um, so the reason we're pressure canning is because we want safety. Um, we want it. We want it to last. Uh, water bathing goes great with jams and jellies and just plain tomatoes and fruits. I've water bathed all that and I never have anything go bad. Maybe one jar of fruits or something per year out of I don't know what three or four hundred, five hundred jars of fruit. I have one go bad, so it's not a big deal. Um, you can afford that. If you only do 10 jars and one of them goes bad or two of them, then that is a big deal. Um, I get that. Um, we have nobody watching the chat right now because they're, they're working, so we're okay, guys. We'll try and run back or you can ask questions in a little bit. That's the whole purpose of live. It's kind of iffy when we, we don't know. We're trying to get, and I'm going to put this on here for all my canon ladies. I know Tamara may be in here and some of the others. Um, Right now, we're building this up to pressure, and when it starts making racket, we're probably going to have to transition into the other room or do something to keep the racket, because this is fixing to pop really fast. One thing we did do, we put a new gasket on our pressure canner. Uh, we have several in the cabinet. We bought several to keep up. It started leaking water right here and right here under the lid, and it would drip till it built up pressure, and it took it a long time to build up pressure. And we had just changed this, this seal last year. But if you remember, last year we did a lot of canning. Uh, and we did a lot of canning for somebody else. We barter canned. So this thing got used like two years in a row last year. So we changed it out. You saw it popped up really quickly. And this, within the next three minutes, will be starting to jiggle and we will be at our time. So it makes a difference when you have a good seal inside, how long it builds up pressure. You see how fast it's going. My cannon ladies will probably remember it took a few minutes for it to build up pressure before. Um, give me time. I'm going to dart around here. Um, let me see. Okay, so... The questions I'm seeing right now, yes, we drained the juice off the tomatoes before we started cooking them. Danny put them in cheesecloth and squeezed them out, and then we put them over in the pot with the other stuff. We added nothing but the vinegar and sugar to make more juice. And right now they're draining off the vinegar and sugar that's excess because we don't want all that in our jar. That cuts down on the amount of vinegary taste that you will have. And that's one reason we're pressure canning is because we're not filling the jar with vinegar and sugar mixture. We're filling it with tomatoes that have just been cooked in it, if that makes sense. Now, the juice that we had left from the first batch of tomatoes, like when we squeeze it with the cheesecloth, that is what we, um, that's what we saved. And if you see in the thumbnail, you see jars in the background that have juice in them. And we put the juice in the pressure canner for 15 minutes. That's how long we did the tomatoes. That's how long we did the juice. And it works out fine. Now, the juice that they're taking out of the tomatoes now after they've been cooked, Danny cools that off, eats it to the pigs. So let me see what other questions we have while they're working. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. Danny answered this question earlier, but we were fading in and out, so I'm going to try and reiterate. This is a basic salsa recipe. Gossmania is doing a great job over here. They've got the recipe in the description, I mean, in the chat. And it, so, okay, she's wanting to show y'all what she's got going on. I'll, I'll 
Okay. This is um, what Danny just strained. We just drained it. Ran it through a colander. We ran it yeah. through a colander. Okay. And y'all see, when you pick it up, there's very little juice coming out of it now. And th there is a little bit, but we're okay with a little. You just don't want a jar full of juice. Okay, the cilantro. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, this is what happens when we try to work in a small space. And usually one of us is on that counter, one of us over here, and one of us over here. So it's okay, all three of us moving around. We're trying to stay right here with Where the camera. Where y'all can see us. Um, cilantro. Danny answered this earlier, but with cilantro, we did not want that in some of our dishes. This is a very basic recipe that I can use in chili. I can use it in um, spaghetti. I can put it in soup. I can eat it fresh with chips. Um, but if I want cilantro in it, I want my cilantro last minute. I want fresh cilantro and I have some outside. Um, you can take that and put it in it last minute and you taste the cilantro, right? Oh, yeah. If you cook it in it, it's right. going to have a taste, but it's not going to be that like Mexican fla flavor that you want. Right. It's going to just blend in with everything else. You need to limit yourself too. Before yeah. You put it in. And if I put cilantro in all these jars, that means I have to use it in a Mexican dish for the most part. They missed how long? You cook it before you put it in jars. 20 minutes. 20 minutes or boiling. 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Once it starts boiling, you want to make sure that you're stirring constantly so it doesn't stick on the bottom. Yes, because tomatoes are famous for that, especially with a little juice in okay. and, <laughs> and then you um, you ladle it up, and then once this gets to pressure, it's going to be 15 minutes. Questions? How many jars does this recipe make? I have two canners. So that's 14, 14 quarts. 14 quarts. Off one batch. And we so you made. You can cut that in half if you need to. Yeah, but we made two batches the other day. Or this really is two, four. This is, this, is, this is two batches put This is two batches put together. Okay. So what Danny's saying, what we just showed you and what they're putting in the, res the recipe is a doubled recipe. And we did that. Twice, which means we doubled it for we had four recipes the other day and we're gonna have four today. So everybody, everybody's saying even Oki Rob is saying cilantro is gross, it tastes like dish soap. I agree. I, I just didn't want to I say it, it make right. people mad. I really love it. Right. And I love but it. I don't like it in the um, I love it in a Mexican dish. I just don't like it overpowering. So I don't want it in my spaghetti and I don't want it in my chili. And if I'm going to eat just salsa, it would be okay to cut a little bit fresh and put in my salsa. And by the way, we had salsa last night. Oh, it was good. It was awesome. We opened a jar. I told them at this rate, it's not going to last long, and we're going to have to keep making more. Yeah. But we made tacos, or she made tacos, and we added um, the, the salsa. Okay. So y'all may want to pay attention to the, um, the sound taste a little bit. That's when I turned on my timer for 15 minutes. You're going to let this rock and roll for, for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're good to go. Yeah. So do, how well are you hearing us over that? Do we need to move around in the kitchen to a different spot so you're not hearing? Dan, they, Dan wants to know, can you put the vinegar in the tomatoes after you drain them? The no. Cooking. No. No, no I have to cook in the pot with yeah. it for 20 minutes. Yeah, it has to be cooked. But... We have, if you're pressure canning, you can use a very small amount like we did. Like nor in a normal recipe, this would have been uh, a cup per batch, so two cups. Yeah. We cut that back in half because we don't like the taste. But since we're pressure canning, it's okay. If you're not pressure canning, that would be an issue. So it's just something to be aware of. Yeah. Canning is very, it can be very, canning math can be crazy. But it can, if you understand the basics, like I was telling you before, if you understand the basics, do not press, do not water bath anything with vegetables in it. I don't care what kind of vegetable, like you were talking zucchini, any type of squash, if you added eggplant, any of that you stuff. You can do it if you put vinegar. Well, yeah, you'd have to add a whole lot of vinegar. And I don't know how many of you like a vinegary, really vinegary salsa. Um, the old people, vinegar was their go-to when it was, they would do all these sauces with a high amount of vinegar in it. That's okay. If you put that much vinegar, you can water bath and it's fine and dandy. And, because Rosie. I did the eggplant, but I put a lot of vinegar in the eggplant. Rosie said, I paid $75 for a good 
is a seventy-five dollars a good price on an all-American canner, an older model one, because I found one and wanted to know if it was a good price. An all-American, all-American, yeah. yes, yes, I would think so. As long as it's not warped or bent yeah. or something, you know. I would check for the bottom and stuff, and make sure it's not warped or bent, that the lid fits right, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, that seems like that would be a very good price on it if it was well taken care of. Okay, I don't know. I'm Okay. You're gonna, where are you going to be? You need it from the You just right there where she's at. Yeah, but she's got to have some ice water. That's the other thing. You've got to get some ice Another thing, uh, when y'all are making salsa, make sure that none of your finished product is in anything aluminum. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you only use stainless steel or grainyware. I don't need to put it in this too often. No, you can put the tomatoes in that. Okay. Not finished. Not. No, right. no, 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 you no, can't. I didn't do it at all. I just sent it. We got a stainless here. Where is it at? You got to send another one under this. We got a swap. I just grabbed the first pan that was handy and we've been putting yeah. salt. Okay. okay, thank you. Here's what we're looking for. This one is aluminum. Okay, what Danny's talking about is tomatoes, what's the other? Anything acid. Anything acid. Do not put in this. We're putting the ends, the skins, and stuff like that in this. Amanda just washed it, so this is what I grabbed. So don't get confused by that. I'm glad Danny talked about it. We have these stainless bowls, but that's what we use. Everything we have mainly is stainless for that matter. And so that's what we're doing. And I'm going to put water in it, and y'all are not going to hear it for a minute. Unless Danny or Amanda talk really loud. They want to know what size pressure cooker or canner do you have? The 16 quarts? We make sure. This is a Presto 16 quart. Yeah, are y'all hearing Danny from the background? We should. Okay, Presto 16 quart. I'm not here at the computer, they should hear Yeah, but it's picking up. This has got the voice. Are you sure? I think it can. Okay. All right. So we've got 10 more minutes left in our canner, and in the meantime, we're just processing more tomatoes so we can get rocking and rolling on our second batch. Earlier, when I was waiting to fill the jars, when that 20 minutes was going, I went ahead and chopped all the onions we need for the next batch. Um, we have to go grab the rest of the peppers. Yeah. We have an spare fresh in the Yeah, we got peppers and um, um, hot peppers. So we're just like when you're can doing a can a day and it's a can of frenzy, you just keep going. You just do the next thing. You just have to be kind of organized. You go a step. Tell them we're not organized. We are trying to be organized. <laughs> not when we're on camera. It's hard. We're working. But yeah, being being live has this threw us off a little bit. But y'all yeah. Bear with us. This is not edited. Is what right. It is. It's live. This it's behind the scenes. Unedited. All those cute little videos y'all see where everything's rolled smoothly from, from one process to the next canon, that really don't happen. It takes a lot of work to make the video <laughs> not as smooth like Yeah, that. everybody wants you to can in three minutes or less. Do so, you cut the green spots out of your tomatoes or does it matter? I do for the sauce because I don't like biting into that. So if you I don't do. want to eat it, don't put it in your jar. The pieces of the onion that are not really firm, I don't like to put those in either. The ones that are really flimsy on the outside. Yeah. I yes, they're that. fine to cook with. They wouldn't hurt anything, but I don't really want that in my door. So. Okay, guys, I'm going to be chopping up hot peppers right quick. So do we need to flip that or, or y'all carry a conversation? Let me be chopping hot peppers so we have those. We're good. Um, rock and roll. We're rocking and rolling. My water's not hot. That's why I haven't been not going too good yet. I don't know. Turn on high. There you go. I have to be over here where I can get my peppers done. Do we have any more questions? Not yet. All right, go. So, what are you guys doing today? Okay. Oh, I know what y'all are. Are y'all canning today with us? Do I peel tomatoes and the squeeze? That's what it says. And, the, um, I don't, I don't know what you mean. They peel them and squeeze them. Yeah. Well, I peel them, I don't, I peel them, and then I cut them in half, I pour it while it's in half, and then I just dice it, and I put it in a pot to go into the cheese pot to be thin. 
P-plus is what does it for us. We don't strain as we're going because we, we're we cutting ours, we're not mashing ours. Yeah. So if you want your sausage to just, like, if you want to just grab your tomato and tear it up, like, that's fine too. It's just a preference thing. So we've been putting ours in cheesecloth and twisting it and yeah. squeezing it into all the juice. Yeah. The Show it again have. how it stays in, in pieces here more yeah. than it. So this is what it's strained. <laughs> so we don't see if I can. And it's, whew, we don't want to dump it. It's very thick. It's, see, there's no liquid coming out of my spoon and here. Even it's though it's thick. not in uh, it's still cubes, it's still. I can see okay, better. I got it. This see. is not in exactly cubes, but it is. It's kind of cooked cubes. So it makes it a little bit more chunky. Yeah. If we you, like it like that. So if you had mashed those tomatoes, yeah. Yeah. it would have been, 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 been more paste. Yeah. yeah. It's been more of a paste. But then again, it's a preference thing. So whatever you want to do, it, it's okay. If you're looking for something to go on a pizza, like you're trying to make a pizza sauce, which that oh, would be yeah. a pizza sauce, you could What's make a paste wing? with it. Yeah. Is that this? What's it called? A whiz? Not a whiz. No, uh, we were talking about earlier. The quinoa. The, the quinoa. The quinoa. It's called quinoa. Quinoa. Okay, so if you wanted to do this, use this pot, this. That recipe would work for doing pizzas if you use the quinoa. Mm -hmm. But what I would do so that you have this very versatile is make this basic recipe. Open a jar, throw it in your blender, you're good to go with pizza sauce. I mean, why go to all the trouble of trying to make individual jars of pizza sauce, chili, all this stuff? Yeah, that's uh, it's just easier for us because we like to cook from scratch. Okay, so, after you squeeze the juice out, do you boil it for 20 minutes? Yeah, yes, with all the other stuff in with it. So you're going to put in your vinegar, your sugar, your pepper, and all that stuff. Everything in the pot comes to a boil, then you turn on your timer for 20 minutes. After Actually, it's, it's strained minutes. twice, to be honest. Yes, and yeah, it kind of is, because you're doing the cheese cloth first, you're twisting all that liquid out, then you're putting it in the pot, adding all your stuff, and more liquid cooks out of it. At that point, we're using the spoon to ladle it into the jars and it's just it's just a regular spoon. Um, <clears throat> or you can strain it if you don't have a spoon like that. Like you can modify it however it's just one person says when they can salsa they can part of it chunky and then run the other person to an immersion blender and blend it all up and make a smooth salsa. Ooh, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. Once I say you can yeah. pizzas or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, the pizza sauce. You can do pretty much anything you want in canning once you understand the rules. That's okay, we I have know. a question here that's going to be a little difficult to answer at okay. this point. But it says, how many jars do you put up for the season? That must be a salsa. Well, I guess we're talking about just salsa. Well, we're really wanting at least one a week. but yeah, We're talking about at least 52 right now. Right. So, But for us, I think we would need more than that. I because think we so. really like it, and we like it in a lot of stuff. So if I made chili one night and spaghetti one night, that's two jars in one week. Yeah. And then if we want to just snack on it, that's another jar. So it really depends on how much your family likes salsa and how often you anticipate needing it. So I always kind of break it down weekly. Like how many times in a week do I think I'm going to need this item? So <laughs> and again, for us, two to three. It's not unreasonable. So we're looking at, we could be possibly looking at close to 100 jars. I'm thinking at least 100 jars. That would be two a week. Yeah. Less than two a week, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to eat it at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to eat it on Christmas. But the deal is, we have um, well, we like some it, weeks so. that you won't eat it. I mean, we there'll, be, there'll be some off. weeks that you don't. So you have yeah. to balance that. You can't say I'm going to eat salsa four times a week unless you're just a really OCD person that you, you know, meal plan. Well, we are. We yeah. have meal plans no, in advance. No, we don't. 52 weeks in advance. No, we don't. Hey, we just pulling. estimate. Yeah. Hey, hard hard if you do it in pints and it's only two of you, the pint may be enough. And when you do pints, you could do, say, 50, 75. You know you can have it X amount. I mean, there's 52 weeks in the year. So if you do 52 jars, you're going to have it once a week. If you one week you decide you want two of them, then you're going to have to skip a week somewhere to make it work out. Right. I mean, you have to do the math. But if you're a family and you want a quart, we, I've been finding that a quart is working really good because if you make chili, you make a big amount. If you make spaghetti, you're making a big amount. If there's two of them and you don't need it, 
eat the leftovers. I, I, I can't. These people that don't eat leftovers drive me up the wall. Yeah, I don't know how they survive. I don't know how you survive. So eat the leftovers. Eat the leftovers. But even still, if we can too much, if it ha like we do 100 jars of mail in 70, it's not a big deal because we can use it the next year. Exactly. Yeah, and that's it, always a, you always want one to fall back on. Right. Something. You never know if you might have a failure in a crop or something. So. so it's better to overshoot than to undershoot. Yeah. And so like this year, if we waited on our tomatoes and we did not get enough tomatoes to make enough sauce for what we want, then we would be messed up. We'd be doing without sauce. We have a few jars in the cellar from last year, but what say say we had 50 jars in the cellar. I don't even know because we hadn't done a cellar check yet. Um, but I got to go do a cellar check. If I had 50 jars in the cellar and we canned only 25 this year and we were used to canning 100, I'm already behind. So we would have to limit it or either we, when we run out, we just run out. So this year, in order to prep and get more ahead, is why we're going to the you pick it right now. Um, we see the prices of everything skyrocketing, everything. And if you, the only way you don't see it is if you are not paying attention to the news. Uh, not, I'm not talking about regular news because they're not going to take it. But if you, in regular news, if you see the flooding, the tornadoes, the fires, uh, the hurricanes, the snow, the drought. That means one thing, less food. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at with us. We want to have enough salsa at least for next year because this year's been kind of weird for us. Danny can explain some of the weirdnesses if you want to about the, the weather and why we are doing this so I can chop this up. And not well, we have so much going on with the weather here. Uh, we actually have... Uh, we actually have a video coming up in the next few days about uh, our soil conditions here and some of the weather that we're facing and some of the things that's going on and what we're learning about our seeds and our plants. Uh, we'll probably be doing a total revamp on our garden system this coming year. Uh, just simply because conventional gardening is not working here anymore. And you'll understand that once you, once you watch the video I have about the soil, you'll understand why conventional gardening is not working. We're having to go to another type of garden. The, uh, the U picket has been a lifesaver for us this year because we could go out there and get everything we need at one time to be able to do this. That's the thing about salsa. You've got to have all the ingredients on hand at the, at the right oh, time. I know that was one thing I wanted to mention. Okay. Can you set this aside? Um, I, I meant to mention that. I saw somebody said they have peppers and onions and stuff. Okay, you're going to be cooking your salsa with your tomatoes. So if you have peppers and onions now, you can slice or dice those any way you want them and then stick them in the freezer. When you get ready to make your salsa and you've got all your tomatoes, take your already sliced, diced, or whatever tomatoes, I mean, onions and peppers out and add it to it because you're going to be cooking it anyway so it's not going to be that it's just better if it's fresh and everything's done at one time it tastes better but it's not going to be bad if you have to freeze it and do it later with your tomatoes uh we've done that before we've even froze tomatoes i mean just you can freeze a tomato whole we take the tomato whole off the vine when it's ripe Put it in a plastic bag, in a Ziploc bag, and freeze it. You don't process it. You don't do anything to it. Fresh off the vine once it ripens in a, in a plastic bag in the freezer. Then when we take them out, we do the process she just did in hot water, then cool off, and then... But you don't have to let the tomatoes thaw. As soon as they're no. frozen, you drop them in that hot water skin and make it falls off of them. And it makes it easier. i just be honest. That makes it a lot easier. If it's frozen, you put it in the hot water for a second. The skin falls off. It's still kind of frozen, so then you can chop it up really easily. It's not that hard a deal, but you can save stuff till you have enough. Say you only get 50 tomatoes this week and you wanted 75, hold it till next week. It ain't hurting. Uh, Kimmy, yes, we are going to can more salsa this year than we usually do due to weather conditions and climate change coming in 2020 and 2021.
Oh, and the other thing, guys, if you can't handle hot peppers, do not do what I'm doing. I don't have any gloves on. These are the mucho nachos. These are mucho nachos. So these are not really that hot. They're re they have a tinge of hot, but Danny doesn't like extreme. So I'm not doing a lot. I'm doing like maybe six peppers. But if you like hot, hot it up. You can do any size, any kind. You can add any kind of peppers you want, any hotness or whatever, if that's a word. So uh, with these, but when you do this, I advise gloves with any really hot peppers. These are just a little hot. They, they're not bad. Um, so do wear gloves. Or if you uh, don't wear gloves, don't rub your eyes. Uh, Dorothy, uh, that's one of the things I'm going to be covering in one of the upcoming videos is why the you picket is making it and other people's gardens are not. We've learned that there is a process that they're doing that is uh, that's making the gardening extremely successful. And it's not that it's just... It, it's, um, I'm not going to give the video away, yeah. but I mean, we're, uh, we'll, be talk we'll be showing in a video and talking about it. We're going to see yeah. We just got to have some time to get some editing done. That's the problem right now. The Atkins, so they're going to be making a test batch of this and try it. It really does have kind of a sweet taste, and I've seen a lot of people say they don't like sweet. But it's not sugary sweet. It's, it's not, not, a, like it's not a sugar sweet. It's not like no. a tomato sweet. Right, you just don't, like you just don't have the, the hard tomatoey taste in it. Yeah. I guess it takes that tang of the tomato yeah. away. It does. It gets rid of the the acidic part of the tomato. Yeah, that's what, what I like. Is it, it really was, and if this batch don't turn out to taste exactly, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but well, it tasted well, good it the it last time. We really like the taste. And Danny and Amanda, I think, taste tested the last batch to get it to this point. They would add a little till they got it to the point they knew that's what they wanted. And y'all, I'm not a taste tester because everything tastes exactly the same. Okay, is this ready to go in? Um, in that bowl. Okay. And then we've got to have peppers to get those in the bar. Yeah. Person says if your hands burn, Evelyn says this while you're chopping the peppers because you're not wearing gloves, wash them in dishwashing soap and put. Uh, uh, some few drops of lavender essential oil makes the burn girl. go away. You go, girl. Okay, so I've got lavender handy. Usually it doesn't bother me with these. Now, true jalapenos, like the really, really jalapenos, I will wear gloves. And anything hot, hotter than a jalapeno, I definitely wear gloves. Um, Angie says, what is right around the corner? I just got in here. Well, Angie, we were talking about what's coming in 2020 and 2021. I am now in contact with a scientist from Switzerland by the name of Sasha Gobler. Uh, he has been feeding me information about what's coming in the Grand Solar Minimum. He is relating the uh, changes in our climate over the past several hundreds of years based on science and how that some things are cylindrical. We have no control over them. Nature and the climate just does these things. Um, he shows scientific evidence of how he does it. Um, so that's why we know that 2020 and 2021, uh, based on history now, we're not talking about some fictitious made up stuff. We're talking about things based on history. Um, they're saying that there's going to be some pretty serious food shortages in the near future. Uh, even the agricultural department now has admitted that they have uh, actually told some white lies, if you want to say that. They're saying that like 75% of all the grain crops have been planted when actually it's only like 35%. In order to get the insurance in the crops, they went in and wet planted the fields knowing that it's not going to come up, but they did it so that they could get the insurance money. And then they posted that 75% of the corn had been planted, and they know that the corn will not come up. So there will be a corn shortage this coming year, um, and there's going to be food prices are going to go up uh, drastically. We've even got the little one working. She's going to go get me some more tomatoes. Ms. Wanda's headed to the shop, I'm guessing, to get to more them. bell yes. peppers out of the refrigerator? Yes. we got more bell peppers out in the barn, in the fridge. Sunshine's getting more tomatoes. I'm working on these. We're going to start chopping here in a few minutes. 
and then we'll be ready to rock and roll again once this cools down. It's going to take a little time for it to unlock, and then we'll be ready to go again. We've still got that little bit in this bowl that's ready to rock and roll, so we're doing good. We're doing good. We're keeping, keeping it going. Yes. Peppers. Ooh. More peppers. Okay, do we have garlic for this batch? No. Yeah, no, peels are good. So that's one thing. If you have little ones and you're trying to can, give them a dog. They will yeah. love it. They'll feel like they're participating. They'll feel like they're contributing to your food source too. And that makes the little person feel so much pride. Like she, in a good way. She feels, she's proud of it when she, at the end of the day, did something that matters. Okay. She knows that the food matters. So. <gasps> that's hot. That's important. I didn't know there was something in it. Yeah, okay. It's very hot. Never mind. Uh, yes, Angie, uh, we're having a, uh, we've had a heat wave come through here with over 100 degrees for like two weeks, but the last couple of mornings we got up and the temperature has been like 64 to 65 degrees and the days have not been hot. It's, it's almost like fall here, so it's, uh, it's it's a little bit cooler here than what it's been being. Nice. Okay, so I'm doing bread and bales right now. Be clearing them up. Can I move just a touch? We have a big kitchen, but when we're working inside the camera range, it's really, really difficult for us to stay there. Good job, Sugar. Oh, you carried a bunch in here. Hang on. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're doing great. Right Ross Mania says, yep, it felt like we woke up this morning in October. Oh, right. it's awesome. I was over at the cabin earlier. It's, it's wonderful. We're supposed to be down to 62 in the morning. Really? Yeah. That's going to be nice. It's not even hot out there right now. I've been out peeling the wood on the for the bed that we're making, and yeah. it's really it's really been nice. I mean, everything's been really decent today. It's not been a bad... I mean, I almost feel guilty being in the house making salsa. Okay, I'm going to move these and start. Oh, you got to have the chopping. You got to be chopping. Really chopping. Remember, this is hot. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, is. It's a camera. Okay, okay she's got to rearrange. Yes, that's hot. So, I think um, so. Okay. Unless you, you have to don't let it melt it now. It's hot. Yeah. It's going to have to sit on something. Um, is there any questions? I don't have anything to talk about unless I'm fed something live. I'm just... Jan said her Bradford pear leaves are already turning red. We have wow. heard from a lot of people we, we've that heard, yeah. leaves are turning, colors, and a lot of them are falling off. I've noticed that here we have two maples in the front yard. And have you noticed one of them, the, um, the silver maple has already got silvery look to it? Plus, it's, some of the leaves are already out of the ground. Have you noticed yeah, that? Yeah, our silver maple. Our silver one, yeah. I noticed that the other day. That and that usually doesn't happen until what? Fall? Um, usually, way off the ground. And um, so, okay, we need tomatoes out. Hold on. And this is what we do, guys. We kind of keep an eye on everything. It makes a difference having an extra person in the kitchen. And while one of us is doing one thing, we all keep an eye on all the process because we don't need this to go very long. Um, Oklahoma rocks. Uh, our premier blueberries are over now. But no, you do not wash or rinse any blueberries before you freeze them. That was it yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday we picked uh, 10, 10 gallons. Picked 10 gallons of blueberries yesterday morning. Yeah. That's one thing we did. Uh, his dad has a blueberry farm that, I mean, it shut down. There's nobody running it now. But we still have access to go in and pick. And last week we went in one day and picked six gallons. We went in yesterday and picked 10. So, and it didn't take us that long because a lot of them were really ready to be, come off the tree. You could almost just sit there and just rake them off. I mean, what, two hours? Three at the most. Yeah, we were done. I got to catch up on some of the uh, questions here. Uh, 
Adkins says it's going to be 49 tonight in Kentucky. Oh, wow. Um, let's see here. Do you add vinegar if you pressure can salsa? You do not have to if you do not want to. No, you can leave the vinegar out. The vinegar is only for water bathing. But, I mean, um, you might want a little for flavor, but it's up to you. If you pressure can, you're just pressure canning tomatoes, onions, and okay, garlic, and peppers. Uh, Beth, uh, yes, if you side dress your black-eyed peas, uh, peas need, they need, they don't need to be too much water because your, the roots won't do good, but they need a, about an inch a week. Let's say that. Okay, Latonia says, how do you know when to plant seeds for any vegetable? Well, we have a, well, it's over on Patreon, but we have a calendar that we show over there with planting I, days. I think she's talking about specifics. Aren't you like when to plant beans, when to plant corn? Yeah, and that would be above ground and below ground crops. You've got yeah. certain days you plant above ground crops on, certain days you plant below ground crops on. But I'm, I'm wanting to be a more specific, like when to plant corn. Is it in the spring, in the fall? That's one of the things that I'm hoping on Patreon we'll get to shortly is a video explaining each, like peas, beans, types of peas and beans, when you can plant them, if they're spring crop, crop or fall crop or winter crop. I mean, it's really, that's where I think a lot of people are getting mixed up. They think they can just, if it's a above crop planting day, they think they can just plant any above crop, ground crop. But it, you can't do it in the mid of August to go out there and plant English peas because that's not going to work. So there's times and that's what she's asking. How are your pineapples doing these days? We have three of them that's actually doing pretty good. They need fertilizing at the moment, uh, but we're going to get to it. We did some fertilizing yesterday on some of the things in the garden, yeah. but we're going to be getting to the pineapples here shortly. So we have three, three or four. I thought we had four little pineapples. I thought we got four. We got one in the greenhouse still. Yeah. What supplier do you get your primary blueberry plants from? We get ours uh, from uh, what's the, uh, what's that nursery of uh, Groggins, Tim Groggins. Yeah, but it's called Sandy Run. Sandy Run Nursery, just south of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Great prices on trees. Yeah, uh, Google Sandy Run Nursery. Yeah, just Google Sandy Run Nursery. In Hattiesburg, Mississippi, I think. Or it may come up as Purvis, Mississippi. I'm not sure which. Uh, yes, Beth, it does depend on what zone you're in. Yeah. Can you eat this salsa immediately after canning yes. to sample or take it, or does it have to sit a while? No, you can eat it while, but before you even can it, you can eat it. This is ready. Right here. This is ready. You can eat this now if you want to. The 15 minutes in the canner is not going to change that too much. By putting it in there, it's just processing it enough that it doesn't go bad. So, yes, and I forgot. See, we forget. We're deep south. We do forget things on occasion. Okay. You have to ask questions, or I don't know what to say. Well, there's no question right now, but it's basically chatting them off one another. Okay, so are we done, or are we supposed to be showing something else? Uh, why do we not wash blueberries before freezing? There is no need in it, because they come off of the tree, they're perfectly clean. Um, as a matter of fact, usually before we even put them in anything, we don't wash them, because ours are all organically grown and never sprayed with anything. They'll also stick together in the freezer. Yeah, they'll stick together in the yeah. bags if you wash them. If you wash them, the, they'll That's freeze the together. Thing. You can't get them yeah. apart. Plus, the deal is, um, if we want just a handful of blueberries, I want to in individually take out 10. I can. If you wash them and put them together and they're frozen in a clump, you got to wait on the whole bag. Then you got to refreeze. And they once they do that, it's just You can use them in recipes, too, individually. If you yeah. If you only want a cup of blueberries, you can take out a cup. Yep. We like them that way. Anything that, like if the berries, when we were picking, got too um, mushy, where they did stick together, we use those bags for Jelly. jellies and jams. jams. Because if a blueberry gets too far gone, it will mush and stick together. But we pick ours at a time when they freeze individually. 
They want to know what do we recommend for bind boards and squash? Well, Goss Manium, when I figure that one out, I'll be a rich man. Right now, he's oh, I did that wrong. Yeah. Right now, he's picking them all off. I'm picking them off by them. hand right now. I'm staying ahead of them, but every Very day, right. I get them every day. Uh, we've had a few, not many tomato hornworms, but you found a few. We've had a few um, squash borers. They got some squash, but they left others alone, and we managed to keep some going. That's ready to come out. Yes, Oklahoma rocks. We don't wash any strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, or blueberries, or any kind. No, I wash none of huckleberries, none of them. No. Once they come out of the freezer, like if I'm going to make something with them, I usually, if I want them reasonably thawed, my thought is I, uh, I put them in warm water for just a minute, and in that process, ooh, nice splatter. When I put them in warm water, that's what I usually do to um, wash them after they're fixing to be used, in other words. Rosie says, frozen blueberries makes a good sorbet in the blueberry. It does. Yum. Ooh. They do. Yeah. I have. Well, I, have. I make Danny what I call, what was it, fig ice cream? Yeah, you make a fig ice cream. And all it is is frozen figs. Uh, I freeze them whole. And when I get ready to make ice cream, I take them out and I don't thaw them out. I, well, I, I hadn't done it because I don't have a blender right now. All right. Our uh, blender thingy broke, so I don't have one. But when I had it, I would take like six or eight peaches, add a little bit of sugar because you don't like a lot of sugar, and I would blend it and I'd put a touch of almond milk. Um, I need another one. Can she take this? Uh, Evelyn, we don't put apple cider vinegar on any plant because it's vinegar and it would burn it. Uh, I haven't watched this video that uh, Pioneer puts up um, about the squash borers, so I can't honestly give anybody an opinion on that. Uh, what kind of you need? A tomato bowl. Jennifer says, I'm seeing a red bug that kind of sort of looks like a large ant. Not sure what they are. It's more than likely, Jen, it's more than likely an immature stink bug because they're kind of an orangish red color and they're long and they mature into the big brown ones. Yeah. And they're usually in clusters. When you find them on a plant, there's usually a cluster of them together. Okay. We're almost to the point that we got to shut this off. We're not doing any more tomatoes till we catch up. So, um, you don't matter. Go for it. It's part of the process. Yeah. So, we're always, yeah, moving this. Grab. <laughs> this is what we do, guys. We, we have uh, BWW. We have tried uh, Mr. Charles, an old Alabama gardener, his method um, of using the tin foil. Uh, some plants it works on, some it don't. Yeah, but that's did. the one you're talking about. Yeah, we did that. Okay. Ask them do they have any more questions because I'm running out and we'll probably shut it okay. down. Have we answered all the questions on salsa? Do we have any more questions on salsa? Everybody's asking. Um, this one is wanting to know because if not, we're probably going to shut this down. Yeah, so because I haven't eaten, Amanda had not eaten. Good. We're going to grab something and keep processing. And we wanted to try and go live because we hadn't done this at lunchtime very much here lately. Uh, and, uh, Steve, but, we're not saving our tomato juice this time because we have just jars and jars and jars of tomato juice. I'm actually feeding it to the pigs right yeah. now. We did save some last week when we did it because we wanted some fresh, but we have like three years or better of juice down. I use the oldest first. So the past three years, I have a lot of juice, tomato juice, tomato stuff. So this year we're making all salsa and we only kept a few jars of the uh, juice for fresh. Oh, thank so, you. 
So we're good with that. Thank you. Is there anything else? Yeah. I'll see uh, no, not yet. We just put it down until we leave it on the floor. Y'all check Instagram later. We'll be posting pictures. You can find Freedom yeah. Makers and Geek South on Instagram. Yeah, I think so. So, guys, if that's it, any more questions? No. Going once, no. going twice. Shut her down. Please, All right, guys. Down. This is Danny and Wanda from Deep South, Amanda from Freedom Makers, and you can check out Deep South Crazy Days and Freedom Makers if you want to. Sunshine. We're doing everything we can. There's Miss Sunshine. Say hey. <laughs> She's our little goer. She's been right here. <laughs> and um, check all our channels out. We're going to continue with the salsa. And Amanda and I may go live if we start canning something next week because we've got a couple of ideas on canning next week that we'd like to do. And while we can, we want to show you guys as much safety canning as possible. And that's why with the salsa, we are processing it with the pressure pan. So you can do it, but add your vinegar. Yes. We're thinking once a week, right? Doing a cannon live Something, stream. yeah, we think. So we'll fine tune this process. and Something for the next little while, we may do a cannon something. So you guys get your cannon. Um, I did not charge for this. I just did live. I usually charge for a canning thing, and we go from beginning to end all the process, and I've had many people want me to do that again. I think I'm going to go live one day. I'm going to open the super chat up. I just hadn't decided when, and instead of me asking people to contact me and me sending URLs, if they feel led, they can help me out with the super chat, and we'll just call it quits with that, and I'll go live, and we'll talk beginning to end on water bathing and pressure canning. And I'll have all my mods there that are really good, like Amanda and Bandana Grandma. They have the best, they, they are shooting the information to you as fast. If I can't get to it, they answer your questions. So we're going to do that sometime in the future, but I have no date yet. We'll work on it and get back Any to more you. questions? Nope. Okay, so we're good. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.